Uh, that lady gets a book. It's strange, no? The third one gets a book. Yes, ma'am. Sorry? You're a great speaker. Great? Speaker. Okay, Lam. Okay. Yeah. But uh, can you share with us the hardest presentation you ever had? That's a long story. Do I have five minutes? <laughs> um, it's really a powerful story. It'll change your life. Do you, can I have five minutes? Three and a half. Uh, I wrote in my book, first, my first attempt was to look good while speaking. That was a wrong attempt. The second one was to be a good speaker. Wrong attempt. You have to be a speaker of good things. Does that make sense? Looking good, being a good speaker, a speaker of good things. Now here's my most challenging presentation. Three and a half minutes, all right? I'm, I know I'm all the time. Uh, five years ago, Jesse Robredo of Bicol, Naga, when he was a mayor, now he's the ombudsman or whatever, no? He invited me to come and speak to, he was having a public, uh, private partnership dialogue and he said, Raju, come and talk. And he said, please come and inspire my entrepreneurs there. And I said, sure. How much, how much are you going to pay? What's etc. Well, I'm a man. Yeah? So I went there hoping to see at least three to four hundred people. I took the bus. They didn't even provide for airfare or whatever. So I took the cheapest bus from Ayala, Alabang. I arrived in Bicol and I thought, hey, there'll be a big crowd to uh, pick me up. There was a tricycle guy. He picked me up. So me and my wife, and we went to, the, went to this event, and they brought me to a small house. And I was looking, there'll be a banner, speaker, Raju Mandiyan's coming, you know, and blah, 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 400 people. So they brought me to a house. I said, what, this is a pit stop? Do we have to rest here? He said, no, this is the speaking venue. <laughs> and so I said, okay, the house must be big inside. So they take me to the back room, to the kitchen. And the kitchen, I think, was the size of this stairway, you know, twice as that. And they said, the boy who brought me on a tricycle, he said, Raju, you have to speak here. The challenging part here, amazing thing, no? is uh, now I said, how many people will come into this room? 30, 40, 20? Seven people came into the room. Seven people into that room. All of them in their 70s. All of them uh, pulvoron makers from Vicor. Lolas, Grand Lolas, Grand Lolos. Seven of them. And I said, God, I, I said, uh, do they speak English? They said, well, they understand. I said, fine. Now, my wife was with me. I was hoping she would translate for me. She's Philippine. Do you know, uh, at that minute, because you, you think you're a professional public speaker, I have taken what is known as the Atenic Code of Public Speakers. That means I will speak to you no matter whether you are one or a thousand. That's the promise I've taken. That's my oath. That's my oath. So I remember that oath. I said, seven people, full on makers, all in their 70s, and they understand English. So I let that ethnic code surface from my being. I said, Raju, you're going to add value. Your objective is authentic. You're going to add value to their lives, whether you came by bus, took a tricycle, or are being paid for it or not. I spoke for 90 minutes, believe it or not, in Tagalog, about branding, packaging, about how to hire more employees, how to create a marketing plan. 90 minutes in Tagalog. I had asked my wife to translate, and she stood there for 90 minutes. She said, when and how did you learn Tagalog? I said, just now. <laughs> this is true. This is true. So that it is a true story. It really happened. I am proud of that. Does that make sense to you? I am really proud of that. You get a book.